Well, thank you all for staying uh, for our awards ceremony, which is all about celebrating the work of the Fellows of the Royal Statistical Society. And each year we award various uh, prizes and medals to members who've made outstanding contributions to the development of statistics. And we've got awards for different statistical practices and for a range of different career stages. Um, and so each of our awards has different requirements and different criteria for entry. So no one award is the same. And as members, all of our members are encouraged um, to look at the criteria and to consider your colleagues and peers who you think deserve recognition. And through our medals and our prizes, we want to celebrate the breadth of talent um, throughout the society and also the discipline. And so nominations are made by individual RSS fellows as well as by our own committees and sections and special interest and local groups. And so this year we're going to be um, making five awards, the Guy Medal in Silver and the Guy Medal in Bronze, the David Cox Research Prize, the Barnett Award, an honorary fellowship, and actually I think it's also it's six, isn't it? It's also the Mardi Prize as well. And so we're delighted that many or most of the recipients are here in person to receive their awards. Look forward to congratulating you. Uh, next year, we're giving up to 14 awards. So you can imagine the task ahead for our um, awards and honours committee. And our, our conference is going to be in Brighton, so we hope to see you there. And we'll be leaving a little bit more time on the programme um, for that ceremony. We are working very hard to recognise talent across the whole of the RSS membership and to ensure that our awards are as inclusive as possible. But in order to achieve this, we're um, putting in additional steps um, to extend our reach. And so we're including uh, appointing uh, three search committees um, to uh, look out for, for talent that we want to uh, award, um, to seek out and nominate candidates. Uh, and they will, they will, then we've also got targeted mailing lists um, out to relevant groups and members. And we're also running workshops on, on how to nominate your peers. One was run earlier today, just after lunch, and we've got another one um, that will be um, online, and the details of that will be confirmed. So please do look out for that. Please do participate participate and please do um, nominate your, your colleagues. If you know somebody who you think is deserving of an honour, just don't hesitate uh, because we're very excited to be able to recognise um, the breadth of talent that we have across the discipline. So that's enough from me. Thank you very much and I'm going to hand over to Andy for the first award. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Again, there's a number of privileges of being president, and this is yet, yet another one. So uh, really pleased to be here. The uh, award ceremony is now established as part of, of, of conference, which, which is great. And it's great to see so many people here today. Uh, so we're going to be begin with the, the Guy Medals. Um, Guy Medals are named after the distinguished statistician William Guy. They are intended to encourage the cultivation of statistics in scientific contexts i.e. promote the application of numbers to the solution of important problems in all the relations of life in which numerical method can be employed with a view to determining the laws which regulate them. The silver medal is awarded to a fellow in respect of a paper or papers of special merit communicated to the society at a discussion meeting. These were formally called ordinary meetings or known as red papers. Other contributions to statistics can be considered. The Guy Medal in Silver for 2023 is awarded to Mark Duolami for contributions to computational statistics and machine learning. In particular, his work on differential geometric approaches to stochastic stimulation for statistical inference. Published in the paper, Raymond Manifold Langevin and Hamiltonian Monte Carlo Methods. So, uh, it's hard enough just to come up with a title, let alone actually the content. So, um, Mark, if you'd like to come up to the stage, please. Uh, 
Uh, well, it's an absolute honour uh, to, to receive this, um, especially when I look at some of the recipients uh, of the Guy Medal in Silver over many, many years. So I am uh, absolutely um, it, really honoured and really feel the honour to, to have been recognised uh, for that paper, Riemann Manifold, Longevin uh, and Hamiltonian Dynamical Systems. Um, it was a really exciting time because some of the, the contributors to that paper were David Cox and C.R. Rao uh, also contributed to it. And of course, uh, he passed away uh, just this month, uh, one of the, the, the great statisticians uh, of uh, a number of eras. So thank you again, and I'll probably <laughs> see you at the, the drinks reception just shortly. Thanks, Andy. So that was a very good ad hoc speech. So maybe a warning to other people that uh, you can say a few words, but you don't have to. But, uh, uh, okay, moving on to the bronze medal. The bronze medal is awarded to a fellow of the society in respect of excellent work presented to any conference or meeting run by the society or published in any of the society's journals. Eligible candidates must be within 15 years of the award of their first degree other contributions may be considered. The Guy Medal in Bronze 2022 is awarded to Tengao Wang for his contributions to high dimensional statistics, including change point estimation, dimension reduction, and missing data. So Teng Zhao, would you like to come up, please? So I'm really honored to receive this uh, prestigious award, especially from the Royal Statistical Society. It's, uh, RSS is the oldest statistical society and also has always been leading the way to shape how we statisticians are um, answering all the new data challenges that's evolving in the society. And uh, I still remember as a research student, one of the first papers I read is a discussion article in GRSSB on change point analysis. And you can kind of see from the citation that has to a great extent influenced my research interest. And also it has uh, affected my research taste because it tells me what constitutes a good research. And throughout the years I've worked on many interesting problems and I, Royal Statistics Society is always one of the first venues I try to strive to publish my work in. And um, standing here I would like to thank many people. And first and foremost I'd like to thank my academic advisor, Richard Samuels who has been a great mentor and also an inspirational advisor and has always been my role model in my academic career. And I would also like to thank my colleagues and co-authors. So to me, collaborations and sharing of ideas is one of the most appealing aspects of being an academic. Um, and uh, thank you all for making my academic journey the most enjoyable one. And last but not the least, I would like to thank my wife and my family for their continuous support through all these years and for being the joy of my life. Thank you. So we move on to the, the Barnett Award. The Barnett Award, a named lecture established in the memory of Vic Barnett, aimed at encouraging and promoting the recognition of outstanding contributions to the field of environmental statistics. It also covers methodological development the application of statistical methods to environmental sciences or exposition. In 2023, Barnett's award is made to Mark Genton for his international impact in environmental statistics. He's particularly recognized for his work in spatial and spatial temporal statistics with applications in environmental problems. Almost 300 publications with over 14,000 citations. Mark will deliver his Barnett lecture on Thursday, the 7th of September, at 10.10 in the auditorium. 
So I'd like to ask uh, Mark to come up to accept his award. Well, uh, thank you very much indeed. I'm very happy and honored to receive uh, this, this award. So um, I would like to thank in particular the, the RSS, but also my many collaborators over the year and over the world. They all contributed in some way to me receiving this award today, so thank you very much. Um, as a statistician, I couldn't help to look at some numbers, and here's what I discovered. This is the ninth time that the Barnett Award is given. It's the third time it goes outside of the UK, and it's definitely the first time it goes to someone working and living in the Middle East. So thank you very much for that. Um, I will give the Barnett Lecture on Thursday, and I'm looking forward to seeing you and telling you about the exciting story of Exagerstat, a software um, that my group has been developing over the past couple of years. So. Uh, see you on Thursday. Thank you very much. The David Cox Research Prize is awarded annually to fellow of the society near the beginning of their research career for an outstanding published contribution to statistical theory or application. The winner is awarded £2,000 by the society. The 2023 David Cox Research Prize is awarded to Oliver, uh, Oliver Stoner for his work on modeling of flawed data, including methods for dealing with underreporting and delayed reporting issues. So, um, Oliver, would you like to come up to see your award? Yes, absolutely. Um, you don't take it away if the speech is no good. <laughs> so honestly, this is um, a dream come true, especially since I know there are so many um, talented early career researchers um, who deserve this at least as much as I do. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to say a few words of appreciation, really share the love for my colleagues in the statistics and data analytics group at the University of Glasgow. Sincerely, I feel, I am gonna cry. <laughs> um, you've made me feel so intensely supported and encouraged, both in terms of my um, career aspirations, but also through what's been quite a lot of um, mental health adversity and I feel a really strong sense that we're working as a team towards a common goal and not in competition with each other at all. I want to say some specific words of appreciation for three people. First, my senior colleague, Claire, um, who in summary inspires me to dedicate myself more towards the success of others than my own. I'd also like to say thank you to what I feel is my core research team at the moment, which is my old PhD supervisor, Theo, and my first PhD student, Alba, who both have to put up with my eccentricities more than anyone else that I work with. Theo isn't here, he's in um, Cyprus, so he'll be watching a recording later. It's probably for the best that he's not here because um, the last time we went to a conference together, we were just in a hot tub talking about statistical models rather than attending talks. 
So, um, but I would say Theo taught me the skill that I personally treasure most, which is how to write and communicate well. And he taught me the values that I treasure most, which are aiming for the highest standards of statistical rigor and collegiality. I want to finish by saying that the city of Glasgow has a slogan. The slogan is, people make Glasgow. And I can say wholeheartedly that that applies to the group I have the honor of working with. Thank you. Honorary Fellowship is awarded to individuals working in fields related to statistics who are not necessarily or primarily members of the statistical profession. Awards are directed towards nominees who are aligned with the RSS's charter and values. An Honorary Fellowship is a lifetime award. The Honorary Fellowship is awarded to Walter Rademacher, I probably mispronounced that, uh, is awarded in recognition of his dedicated and significant contributions to statistics and particularly official statistics internationally. From 1978 to 2008, he held a series of posts at the German Federal Statistics Office, culminating in his position as its president. Unfortunately, Walter could not be here with us today uh, to receive his award in person, but he is going to be in London, I think, in a couple of weeks' time, so I will hopefully uh, give it to him then. And now I'd like to hand over to uh, Kanti Mardia, to come up to present the Kanti Mardia Prize. And the Mardia Prize was founded by RSS fellow Kanti Mardia to encourage cutting edge interdisciplinary work. Would you like to come up and do you want to say Thank some you. words? Would like to say a few words, can see? Or... Yeah, I can say a few words. Yes, yes please I think uh, it is, this prize is slightly different. You have seen Guy Prize, you have seen Cox Prize, you have seen Vic Barnett Prize, but Mardia, whatever the, the RSS has been kind to while a living man, uh, so, you know, to give, have the courage to have Mardia Prize, and uh, it's nice to be live and <laughs> to talk about Mardia Prize. <laughs> so so the, the how it came in, uh, it is, I ran call Leeds Annual Statistical Research Workshop for about 40 years, and I struggled, you know, to find pennies to run it. and. Uh, uh, applied here, applied there, and to get seed money was so difficult because what I was trying to say, it's something new, something visionary, that what I thought, something interdisciplinary, something which is emerging uh, where the science and statistics can meet each other strongly. So, so that, that's, uh, and since I had this problem, uh, I thought, there could be such kind of an initiative, and I'm grateful to the Royal Statistical Society, the president, uh, and many others uh, who have been administering this prize. And it is now seventh year, uh, and I've seen so much energy in it because there has been some uh, candidate, it has been globally number one. Number two, it has been very wide areas, you know, the uh, areas, you know, going COVID, of course, we have to fail, health science, ecology, uh, machine learning. So, so it is doing what I thought one should be doing, not only sitting in leads, uh, but to do it globally. And uh, it has been fortunately taken over not only in, from this country, but from other nations. So, so, so I'm very pleased that this is uh, uh, going on, and uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, you know, the first time 
you know, the one who is receiving this prize, I know personally. <laughs> so this is a bit embarrassing, but it is a great pleasure and uh, what a nice uh, decision by the Royal Historical Society uh, for Professor Jane Hutton. Uh, now it is legal, I think. I hope she's not going to charge me with some, uh, some article, something. Uh, so now what I'm trying to say to those who are here that there is this initiative, you know, there are these all young minds, there are all these beautiful minds, there are beautiful problems, you know, which is all this data analysis everywhere. And uh, to get together, you know, to have a mission of bringing statistics in a broader sense, which of course, statistical, you know, the Royal Secret Society and many others are doing. So with this, I think I shouldn't carry on just keep on applying. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, as Kenty says, I mean, from my side as well, it's very nice to be able to um, shake the hand of the person who set up the prize. And I'd like to thank him for his generosity in setting up the prize and for his inspiration and interdisciplinary work. Um, the workshops are going to be a series of workshops on statistics and the law, four workshops. So I need to thank Warwick Statistics, um, which is co-funding two of the workshops, and the team of people who are with me. The stats in the law section of the RSS um, has had lawyers as part of our membership on the committee uh, pretty well throughout, which I think is important, because actually data, evidence, and decisions is, of course, what lawyers are interested in as well. And we can have some lovely discussions about what we mean by data or evidence, um, and then evaluate the validity of the decisions. Um, one of my concerns is that there are so many interesting things for people to do, and I have a feeling there's slightly more grey-haired people in the stats and the law that I'd like on balance, so may I encourage anybody who's younger who might have an interest, uh, please do keep an eye out for things and get involved. It's not... I wouldn't go on Twitter. Um, I wouldn't have the courage, um, Chris's courage to to face that, but actually um, evidence in court is probably not nearly as frightening as people think, and you might not ever turn up in court anyway. So do let's consider what RSS can contribute to our wider, wider society in terms of data, evidence, and decisions. So thank you again, Mardia. So I think it's so nice to recognize the achievements of the uh, RSS fellows, and uh, I think it just shows what a, a spread of talent that we have in the organization. And as Sarah said, next year we, we've got something like 12 awards, so uh, hopefully we'll have more people at the, at the Brighton Conference coming up. Um, so what I'd like to say, uh, just, just to close out, um, the next step is essentially uh, the awards and poster reception, you'd be pleased to know. The reception is sponsored by Mathematics, an open uh, access journal by MDPI. So we'd like to thank them for sponsoring it. Uh, and the reception is held in the exhibition hall. A um, bit like my, my, my uh, initial talk yesterday, really take advantage. Let's go and talk to the people that are uh, presenting their posters uh, and do mingle. And uh, hopefully it's a good vibe. So thanks you very much for uh, an excellent day. And uh, we move on to um, some drinks and then tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>